Thank you for listening to Comics for Fun and Profit. This is Kyle and Drew with your sneak peek at next week, episode number 374, where Drew and myself will go through comics originally releasing April 19th, 2017. But before Drew and I dig through what's coming out this Wednesday in your local comic book shops that you need to collect, throw in a short box, or put directly on the secondary market, we've got top top comics from March out. Uh, we've got all kinds of stuff, trailers and 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 recalled books and all kinds of stuff going on in the world of comics. Drew, what do we got? Um, well, I think we should lead off with the big, the big, big news. Oh, it's the Inkwell Awards. Ooh, da, 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 <laughs> the voting da, da, opens da, da. on the 15th, which I believe is when this will go up, if I get my stuff together. This should go up on the 15th, and you can go to inkwellawards.com and vote for your favorite anchor. We don't want any penciler votes. Mm. It's your favorite anchor. Who Who's your favorite anchor? Jordi Blair. Is she an anchor? I don't know. She's a colorist. Oh, wait, that's right. We got anchors yeah. just... Uh, oh. anchors, anchors take the uh, the scratchy uh, Yeah, I'm going back to my, chase, my chasing And Andy. actually make it look pretty. Yeah, friggin' tracers. Or, or they're just tracers. I don't know. Some of them are fantastic. They now, if you they go really to are, actually, if I, you I've go seen... to Inkwell Awards, and you look at some of the process stuff, where they show the original pencil layout and then the af- uh, the ink interpretations afterwards, you see what an inker does, and uh, it's pretty amazing stuff. But um, what about all these digital people? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't understand it very well. So I'm. Um, I would say. Uh, just go vote for your favorite artist. <laughs> 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 Call them an inker. So it's Fiona Staples, right? Sure. She's a penciler, inker, colorist. So she qualifies, maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know. I will have to visit said site and see what I can suss out. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's so many. There's so many great artists, and uh, I don't know if if they only ink. Do they just ink? Is that how they qualify for this award? I don't know. It's very strange. <laughs> um, do they have a letter award somewhere? You know, that's just a standalone, just it's all about letters? I don't know. The Letties. The Letties, maybe. I also was invited to the um, 40th anniversary celebration on May 1st of the Billy Ireland cartoon and uh, cartoon library and museum um up in columbus so Ah. that is part of um a what has it got here it's got a uh it's from four to seven on may 1st so if you're in ohio you can get to columbus go check that out um it's uh let's see we're going to blah 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 blah. so what's they going to do they're going to just crack out a bunch of uh, really old cartoons and strips um, um, comics from way back and, uh, it'll have a, uh, cash bar. So, you know, that, that's worth checking out and a tour, a tour of the facility. So that sounds, sounds very interesting. Uh, you down for that? Maybe. <laughs> well, might be neat. <laughs> yeah. I've never been. Uh, you can check this out at cartoons.osu.edu. Uh, for the Billy Ireland Cartoon Library and Museum. Uh, let's see. We've got a little uh, feedback from Mo Walker, at Dr. Mo 77 on Twitter. Are you going to discuss the investment potential of X-Men Gold on the next episode? Because uh, <coughs> initial orders are our initial, we're seeing some $50 uh, prices on, mm-hmm. slapped on that thing. So... Um, this, of course, is the uh, the controversy book, right? Mm-hmm. X Men Gold number one came out, and the artist Ardian Siaf uh, added religious and political messages considered to be anti Christian and anti Jewish snuck into the artwork of X Men Gold number one. Can I tell you a secret? Yes, I read it yes. and didn't pick up on any of that. Yeah, I, I saw the panels. It's not something I would have necessarily caught up. Uh, granted. I think I might have caught what was on the front of Colossus, but I would never would have caught what's in the crowd at Kitty Pride. 
What about no. the two one two? What, does yeah, that the, mean anything to you? Yeah, that's that's the reference, another reference to the political movement and the Quran thing. But no idea, not, not something I would have caught. Didn't catch any of that. Read it, thought, eh, that was all right. Then the controversy, and I'm like, oh, I missed a lot. Yeah. But of course, your uh, regular cover A is selling, you know, fifteen twenty bucks. Uh, you've of course got your. Uh, there's a one per store variant out there that's o- up to a hundred already. Um, things like your uh, some retro variants that are f- f- between forty and fifty. The Scotty Young cover is going for ten bucks. Um, there, you know, let me see the uh, hip hop. It's only going for six bucks. Your hip hop's your your smallest one. So everything's going up. And this is short-term flip until the heat falls off, or is this something that will always be hot? My gut is telling me it's just short-term flip because this is the kind of controversy that works best in the current times that we're living in and might not even be a big deal later down the line. It'd be cool to have a cover to talk about, ah, look at his recalled books book, but I think it's a quick flip. Yeah. So don't go out and pay these bucks thinking you're going to have something for a while. See if you can but find them on the shelf. Yeah, if you find them on the shelf, snag them and make some quick money. Yeah, I to- totally missed out on this. And uh, even when I heard about it at first, I was like, eh, I don't even want to go run to the comic shop to check and see if it's on the rack. I don't and, even care. And there's going to be a ton. There's a ton of them. I mean, it'll be a, probably your number one book. So, I don't know. Well, I it, it already flip. shipped. It's already shipped and was out, so it can't be a number one book unless it was already a number one book. Right? What do you mean? Are you talking about number one in sales for the month? Yeah. Because, I mean, it was already out before oh, okay. the controversy hit. Well, yeah, you know, I was thinking it was just based on the fact that it's an X-Men number one, and there was a there seemed like there was a lot out there. It was what I was going to guess would be the number one book for its, for this month. Over X Men Prime, yes, and X Men Blue, Blue yeah, and Blue's. everything else. Yeah, so we say, um, if you got them, flip them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. Well, let's see. Uh, Wade Ledden says Alterna Comics increases their initial print runs for newsprint comics, and good for them. I'm planning on at least reading Amazing Age and Mother Russia. Yeah, so, I thought of you as soon as I saw this news. So good for them, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm all in on their first eight titles. I'm going to buy all of them, and I've got a grand total of uh, like seven dollars invested in that <laughs> <laughs> of all the eight of their titles there. So it's pretty easy to support that um and if they hit great if they don't oh well you you supported a a a new comic publisher trying to get off the ground so i think that's very cool adam if you recall adam from uh the uk uh was up is worried about the the mess that he made so he wrote us back again with the, his <laughs> top 10 be I less drew. specific <laughs> what have you done to my beloved top 10s <laughs> hi drew honorable mention to kyle good to hear some listeners chiming in on the top 10 list even with some bending of the rules <laughs> narrowing down the 10 titles is really tough but that's the point to get you thinking about you what you absolutely couldn't live without uh, agree with Julie that I'm that I am gutted to find God Country ending at issue six. Like her, I'm also down to just a single Marvel title now. I'm only reading Kingpin, which I've enjoyed the first two issues of. Yep, me too. Marvel just Marvel just isn't clicking with me anymore, and I'm sick of their prices, events, and flooding of the market with average quality product. For anyone interested in trying 2000 AD. I'd suggest picking up the free comic book day issue as it will all will all be starting points, which is a rarity in this weekly ongoing. It's a bit different in style to heavy metal. There's more of a continental Europe comic. That's that's more of a continental Europe comic and has quite a di- different flavor to the UK. 
I'd be interested to hear if any of you of your U.S. listeners have been readers of 2000 AD. I have no idea what the U.S. market thinks about it. Uh, I don't think we get it here. Mm-hmm. I've, I don't think I've ever seen it on the rack. So maybe in the big metros, they might be on the racks, but I, I've never seen them. Um, it tends to be the starting place for a lot of creators who go to work on the big Go to work at the big two and elsewhere, but attempts like DC reprints of 2008 D material and IDW's Drudge Dread and Rogue Trooper titles never seem to have any success. Tried leaving a nice iTunes review, but was having trouble. My version of iTunes only shows the podcast as having had two reviews, one of which is mine. Don't know enough about iTunes to know if this is a regional thing. If any listeners could advise, that would be great. A few interesting-looking back half of previews picks for June's are Baby Teeth by Donnie Cates, uh, an aftershock. Beautiful Canvas from Black Mask. The Unsound by Colin Bunn from Boom. And Jazz Maynard uh, from Lion Forge. Uh, hope I haven't hijacked too much airtime with my ramblings. Keep up the great work, Adam. Okay, so 2000 AD, I'm guessing you don't see it much either? Correct, I do not. Yeah. And the iTunes thing, I have no idea. It either works or it doesn't. We appreciate it. It sounds the regional. Attempt. I'm going to have to type in EU and see what I can pull up or something like that. Yeah. I'm glad that you can, you can get us over there. And now we have to curate European reviews. <laughs> I'm, I'm all for it. <laughs> that's that's uh, interesting. Um, uh, like Yeah, like your picks. Uh, Baby Teeth uh, for sure was one of ours. And I'm, I'm interested in that Jazz Maynard book too. And of course, uh, anything by Colin Bunn, I'll give it give it give a check out too. Um, beautiful canvas, I may have missed, I may have missed that one. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, don't uh, don't don't sweat the the ramblings. We we like those, so that's cool. Um, and that was a that was that was a nice nice little bit of feedback there, and uh, we appreciate it. You too can reach out to us via email at comics for fun and profit at gmail dot com. To uh, share your thoughts, your top tens, uh, whatever you've got going on. If you have information on 2000 AD that we can share with Adam, we'd like to do that. Um, you can also reach us via Facebook, uh, Twitter, and uh, we're easily found, but it's at Comics Fun Profit on Twitter, and uh, Facebook is comics for fun and profit so you can find them find us that way as well and of course most all of our all of these links are available on comicsfunprofit.com our website so as well as a way to subscribe and leave uh itunes reviews so get up on that we would love to get to we're, we're on our march towards 50 so onward and upward we want 50 ratings and 50 reviews absolutely and maybe, we should probably do something if we reach 50. Should we give away, like, signed comic or something? Sure. One of yours? Sure. I got <laughs> I got some. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we'll do something. We'll, we'll do, like, a giveaway and uh, go through our collections and get a nice uh, thank you bag of goodies to somebody um, uh, once we reach our 50, our 50, 50th iTunes uh, rating and review. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, Wolf says, I hope I get this criteria correct. <laughs> Here we go. Um, I'm going to guess this is going to be kind of heavy Marvel. Uh, let's see. We've got number 10, Champions. Number Marvel. two, Number nine, East of West. Uh, eight is Gwenpool. Seven, Old Man Logan. Six, Super Sons. Five, Captain America Steve Rogers. Four, The Fix. Three, The Black Hammer. Two seven two eternity, and of course number one is Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Not bad, only five out of the ten Marvel. So, yeah, was it one yeah. two three four? Five. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah I, I counted as you were talking. <laughs> I didn't just throw that out of nowhere. I, I literally counted. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. Even threw a D, little DC in there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, good. That's a good list. We like yeah. that. Uh, let's see his best reads of the week. Uh, Black Cloud. Yeah. Sold out. Reprinted. Going for more than cover already. Black Cloud was really uh, something he enjoyed. Uh, his his fire picks. He's got comics that are on fire. He he's he's saying X Men Gold, of course. Bad Rock, Candy Mountain. 
Grass Kings, Black Cloud, and Extremity. Yep. Back, Bad Rock Candy Mountain um, was was good. Is that what it's called? Bad Rock? Called? Or is it Big Rock? Big Rock? It, Bad Rock? Uh, the, uh, the April Fool's one was the Bad Rock. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, that was that was kind of a trippy book. I, I liked it um, for, you know, a book about hobos. <laughs> um, his, spec peak, his spec picks of the week are Rose, God Shaper, Solar Flare, Seven to Eternity, and Heathen. Yep. He's spot like on. All those? Oh, like yeah, all he's, those? he's perfect on those. Rose, I did not like the cover, man. I did not like the looks of that cover. You may not have liked the cover, but it's selling for above cover. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Michael Lamb says he, the number one, already has two 10.0s and seven 9.9s on the CGC census. Darn. I wonder if this is the type of paper Vault is comic is using because you rarely see grades this high in so many copies. In no doubt. What do you think about that? It's got to be something because, yeah, that, that's that's insane. Um, cause Heathen's not... I mean, that's... They got it. They dropped it in the mail. They got it graded. I mean, yeah. right? Because... Yeah. And to have two, two tens already... Seven nine point nines. I mean, is CGC lightening up? No, or... no, because I'm not seeing you know DC stuff come out of tens. So it could just be the uh, the paper stock. Vault's using that card stock that uh, lends itself to uh, pristine copies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very cool. Uh, that there's got to be something to that. I mean, a 10.0 of anything would be kind of cool to have. Definitely. And he also says CBCS has new, their new labels identify newsstand or direct. Ah. Uh, whether it's a newsstand edition or a direct edition. Um, so in the press release, it says they're going to be doing, uh, they're going to be unveiling this um, on C2E2 weekend, which we'll be excited to be a, a witness to. Hey, all right. Um, and they're going to be doing it at Reggie's Chicago Restaurant, though. I don't know where that is. Uh, it's on 2105 South State Street. No. So they're not going to be in... CBCS is not going to be inside the the C2E2. They're going to be like at a restaurant adjacent? Or maybe just their, their, as their re- release panel or whatever will be there. Who knows? Maybe, maybe. Uh, but, yeah, they're like... From noon to nine on Thursday, uh, they're going to be in, in Friday, Saturday, and Sunday hours as well. Um, they'll be accepting uh, submissions at the restaurant. Huh, very cool. Uh, it's different, I'll tell you that. Um, he says that uh, he thinks newsstand are the more desirable. If you're going to get either a direct or a, or a newsstand, news de- newsstands are more desirable because they were returnable. And so, uh-huh. therefore, he thinks they're more rare, but nobody knows because the di- before the direct order era, there weren't, really weren't any real numbers, only guesses. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's the direct market because, because there were so many more comics produced for the newsstand back then that I would think it would be the direct or direct market where those would be the more valuable if you're if you're a collector and you want one or the other I'm going to say you're probably going to lean towards wanting the direct because of the higher volumes of of direct the higher volume of newsstand copies but I don't know I don't you're know. seeing there's there's dr- versions of direct and newsstand for current comics out now too not as many not as many and you're also seeing things like some of them are uh, newsstanders are different priced so like super Saiyan sons number one is a 299 book but if you get the newsstand ver- version it's a 399 book so some people are specifically going out and seeking those because they're also a different price point yeah, those those are hardcore collectors. Correct. Yeah, and completists mm-hmm. that have to have everything. I'm not. I don't. I don't suffer from that affliction anymore. Correct. I mean, I did own a few things um, when uh, the death of the family or 
Death in the fam- Death of the Family for New Fifty Two. Oh yeah, the Joker yeah, covers. That. You could yeah. get the the newsstand variants that were uh, kind of virgin variants. They didn't have the uh, uh, Joker on them. I went out yeah. and sought a few of those to complete like my Nightwing run and my Teen Titans run just for fun. I remember that now. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Uh, he goes on to say it's very hard to explain just how epic the Thor Ragnarok trailer is. Uh, Led Zeppelin plus Thor versus Hulk gladiators equals awesome. Plus Hela plus the death of Mjolnir. Man, that was a that was a great. That was one of the best trailers I think I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, even the font. <laughs> like, like the, the I like the, Ragnar- the, font. the Ragnarok like, font. Well, you got all eighty style, but it was great. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it did look pretty good. It Even like the good. memes that have come out of it. The gifts and the memes. Yeah, I was, I mean, it. yeah, it worked for me. I, I, I assume we didn't see everything we, you know, that the movie has to offer. It was very mm-hmm. intriguing. I want to know how she squeezed the, the hammer and broke it. That's crazy. Yeah, there are questions there. There are definitely some questions. So, um, you know, why is Hulk upset with Thor? It, <laughs> it's it's really good. So uh, yeah, I'm um, I'm excited about it. And now I guess we know why they weren't in the uh, the last movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said uh, we finally got around to read. I finally got around to reading Royal City Number One, and it was really great. I also really liked Grass Kings as well. And I guess Boom Studio has announced that there will be no second prints on Grass, King, Grass Kings, so it will be interesting to watch the numbers on this series. Um, did you read ro- either one of those? I did not. Royal City, like I said, too expensive for me. Yes, you're lying in the stand. <laughs> uh, he's, he's jealous of us going to C2E2. Hope you have a blast and give us a full report on the awesomeness. Definitely. Uh, Lawry's is my favorite Chicago restaurant. You can't beat their prime rib sandwich and local brews on tap. Ooh. So that's Lawry's in Chicago. We will continue to take Chicago <laughs> uh, recommendations uh, through. Well, this is it. Yeah, I yeah. Say. yeah. We're 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 shipping out. We're shipping out next week. So yeah. I don't know if we're doing a show next week. I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, we might uh, might not be able to do that um, once we're on site and uh, want to do something. I don't know. Yeah, you, we might be taking a week off, fellas and ladies. Uh, so, yeah, sorry about that. For yeah, gosh, man, that snuck up on us, or at least on me. Uh, let's see. At uh, he also mentions another opportunity at C two E two that CGC and Skybound have teamed up to create the first full color custom certification labels. For Eisner award-winning comic book series, The Walking Dead, the new labels, the new labels will feature popular characters, Rick, Michonne, Negan, and Walk and Walker. Sorry, I had to put a pin in uh, Laurie's prime rib, so it's on our, it's on my map now. <laughs> the the groundbreaking new designs, bold graphics to pick, barbed wire, blood spatters, and Lucille herself carried through to the back. Top labels and grade box. Created with the both the collector and the true fan in mind, the labels will maintain uh, the CGC labels, universal blue and signature yellow colors for a uniform look. So is that if you get a Walking Dead graded, or is that anything that gets graded? I would hope just a Walking Dead. That would be weird yeah. if you put that yeah. on. Yeah, I wouldn't want that on anything else. That, yeah. that, that would be kind of strange. Um, and Jason from Hawaii sends us uh, yet another cool uh, convention that's happening in Hawaii. It is uh, 2017 Comic Con Honolulu from July 28th through July 30th. Uh, let's see, we've got comic book guest Andy Price from Sabrina, uh, David Gallagher from The Only Living Boy, Bob Layton. A legendary writer and artist for Iron Man, Hercules, and an editor-in-chief for Valiant Comics. We've got uh, Ming-Na Wen, who's the actress of Actress May on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Jules State, who, do, who plays Dr. Keller on Stargate Atlantis. 
Julie Caitlin Brown, who plays somebody on Babylon 5, Natoth. I don't think I've ever seen that. Uh, Kathy and Jimmy. <laughs> I like her. Sister Mary Patrick and Sister Axe 1 and 2. Olive Massery on Veronica's Closet. And she voiced the Peggy Hill on King of the Hill. Yeah, there you go. Carrie mm-hmm. Always, an actor from The Princess Bride. Oh, everybody loves Carrie Always. Everybody loves him. And he was Kevin great Sorbet. in that. And then he was on uh, Psych. Several episodes of Psych. He was really yes. good in that. Yes, yes. And Kevin Sorbo, who is Hercules. Uh, you can find all your ticket and guest info at ComicConHonolulu.com. Jason will be there uh, for, I'm not sure if he'll be there for all three days or just a couple of those days. And uh, aloha from him. Mahalo to you, Jason. And I uh, wish, once again, we wish we were going there and of C2E2. <laughs> <laughs> I would trade two C2E2s for a Hawaii Comic Con. Mm-hmm. Uh, Man, uh, awesome. these uh, those CGC labels for Walking Dead are pretty cool. Are uh, they? I'm wondering who's going to resend their issue one in just to get that label on it. Because they do look pretty rad. Do they? And risk not getting a 9.8 the second time around. <laughs> <laughs> or better, you know. You could get better. You never know. Uh, let's take a quick look over at our numbers now that we've got those uh, legit numbers in. And uh, Kyle nailed it. Boom, Shaka. Yeah, he said uh, only two over 100,000. Amazing. Spider Man 25 and Dark Knight 3, The Master Race. Number eight, and he was right. Both Batman was... stay under 100,000. Off a little on Spider Man twenty five. I said I thought it'd be one hundred and twenty thousand. It was hundred thirteen thousand. Yeah. Um, still, it is the uh, most expensive comic book to ever top the list. Boo! Bad trend. We Boo. don't like it. Yeah, we do not, not like it. That. No, not at all. Um, anything? Now that we've got these these numbers, what jumps out at you? Um, nothing real big popping. Well, some of the smaller publishers, I always like to look at them. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Abstract Studios, uh, Motor Girl, that fourth issue sold 7,500 copies. Um, hopefully that's enough to, uh, to keep the, keep the creators happy there. Uh, I, I like that book. Uh, Terry Moore, I like Terry Moore's book there. And Numbers for he... both all new Wolverine and Old Man Logan going way up this month. Oh, that makes sense, doesn't it? I would hope. I think, uh, you know, I'm guessing it's something to do with you know the movie, but who knows? Uh, Dollface um, under three thousand still with its third issue. Uh, I would have, th- I would have thought it would have taken a little uptick because of all the heat on it. From that first issue, um, but maybe that's just where it lives, and mm-hmm. so um, I, I don't know that these are going to continue to have any spec value. Um, but they low print runs, yeah, definite low print runs. Um, some of the aftershock titles, uh, we've got Animosity at seventy five hundred, still really l- l- far and away their only breakout hit. Yeah, um, Rough Riders down at thirty six hundred. And three thousand for Rough Riders Nation. Um, Alters doing twenty six hundred. Insects at twenty four hundred. Uh, none of that's that stuff's just not catching on, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And um, and I don't know how long Insects is going to be around because that's, that's the tenth issue, and it's at twenty four hundred copies. It it might have to go away. Okay. Did we know Silver Surfer number nine was fifteen weeks late? Yes, we did. Yes, we, we did. We knew Lazarus was four months late. Yeah, and if you read that, um, you got the disappointing back yeah. matter about his break that he needs to take. So, pretty depressing. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the the new Archie stuff. Uh, Riverdale did nineteen thousand for the zero issue. Um, the Jughead 
The Hunger uh, did 11,005, the the standalone Archie title, which is really um, its premier book, and it one that comes out the most to being on time, Mm -hmm. uh, did about 11,000. Josie and the Pussycats I forgot about. (laughs) These Reggie and Meads I didn't realize were still happening, were still a thing. And whatever happened to Betty and Veronica? Oh, yeah. Maybe it was a short one. I can't remember. Yeah, we uh, see the number on Grass King is 13515. So without reprinting that, it's a neat little number. Yeah, it's a good number. Um, Black Mask has a couple. uh, Quantum Teams are Go and Dregs, number two. Both around 3,000, 2,500. So pretty low. Pretty low print runs. Mm -hmm. Uh, Doesn't bode well for them getting through their arc and beyond. Anything else from in that boom section? Not really. Not really. It's really Grass Kings, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Black Hammer, we were talking about. Uh, that seventh issue, almost 12,000 copies. And uh, that seems healthy. For I don't know what Jeff Lemire wants, but or what Dark Horse wants, actually, since it's not completely a creator-owned. Yeah. Um, but I, I hope... I hope between critical claim and uh, that little bit of sales, that that's enough. And then my uh, Joelle Jones there with her Lady Killer, Volume Two, Number Four, uh, almost nine thousand. Seems like that's pretty good. Pretty late. That one's late as well. Yeah. yeah. I think she got uh, distracted by the Big Two money. Mm-hmm. As and, uh, as will happen. And all the work that she's doing over there for that. Yeah. That new Brian Wood Rebels, uh, free and independent states, not quite 7,000 copies of that first issue. A lot of these numbers pretty par for the course, not a lot moving a lot of places, not a lot doing a lot, just kind of trucking along. Yeah, um, so in DC, uh, after you get away from Batman, mm-hmm. uh, which really the top four bestsellers in DC are all Batman titles. And then of course then we got Justice League, who has Batman in it. And that detective, which is a Batman title. Uh you know, that's that's Then we get to Superman. Then we get to Superman. Yeah. And we're gonna we finally get out of that that but yeah, it's it drops down into the sixties and the fifties. And uh that's pretty good. Yeah. That's That's a pretty good number. I know that any of those back half, half publishers would love to have a forty or a fifty thousand seller. We are we worried about any of these rebirth launches? They all look pretty healthy to me. Looking good. I'm, I'm, it's it's cool to see that like Titans is above Nightwing by not much, but just a little bit up there. Teen Titans right there, all all in a tight little bunch. Well, do... but Titans is a nine, and Nightwing's at sixteen and seventeen. Mm-hmm. So is it going to be? Yeah, in seven time will issues. tell on that one. Yeah, and because Teen Titans is already below it. Yeah, Aquaman's starting to dip below thirty, but still healthy. Deathstroke, right where it should be in the mid twenties. Uh, Green Arrow, Aquaman, not selling well. Um, I mean that's about where they were in New Fifty Two. Is it? Yeah, I couldn't remember. But there's a really seems to be a good strong bunch of core titles that uh, Rebirth kind of um, put a little juice into, and they've they've had some staying powder power. Um, and the I'm, one we you know the one we're gonna probably have our eye on the most is New Superman at rank one fifty, uh, dipping below sixteen thousand with fifteen five seventy six. And with that title going to be a. a that title is soon to be a four dollar book instead of a three. Was this the last three dollar one? So it's not going to go um, bi monthly anymore. It's one of those that that's well, that's, yeah, it's, that's never been two per month. That that's always been one single release, hasn't it? Oh yeah, okay, and now so it's going to continue to be one, but it's going to be a dollar more. I believe so. So that will kill that. I mean, right now it just <laughs> dipped below fifteen. 
it's dead in the water if it adds a dollar. Excuse me. Yeah, it, sh- it should be dead. Yeah, it should have been dead already. Um, Cyborg should go. Blue Beetles, done. Um, I don't know how about this this young animal stuff. How much? I think the expectations can... are lower for that, so it's it's about what it should be doing. Do we have uh, any interest in these um, booster gold? Are these annuals that are like half Anna Barbera, half DC characters? I do not believe we do. See where right now we got Invincible at rank 188 at 11,605. Of course, they're skipping issue 133 because it was a quarter, so we're not allowed to talk about that. But I'm curious (laughs) to see what the back the back run of Invincible does now that they've talked about a movie deal. Yeah. Yeah, it should be, should be pretty good. I know, um, uh, Julie from VIP, uh, she had a run of it that she was putting up. That was crazy. It was a crazy run. It was, um, Shoot, let me look here. See if I can find it. Uh, here we go. Yeah, so uh, she's a uh, Khaleesi forty two, K A J L E E S I forty two, and uh, she ended the listing, but she had. <laughs> She had uh, a a big run of Invincible 1 through 18, 25 to 27, um, for like 500 bucks. It was 22 Invincible books, all Mm -hmm. first print. Um, And I didn't realize how hot that first issue of Invincible is. Yeah, you can get five for that going just itself. Yeah, Um, so I gave her some poor advice. And uh, (laughs) she obviously ignored it. And uh, ended it, which was probably the smart thing to do, because um, yeah, yeah, you're, you're gonna, yeah, you're right. Go, why don't you, why don't you get send that first issue over and get it, get it slabbed, and uh, you can get oh, big bucks uh, for that. Mm-hmm. Good call. That's crazy. Yeah, because people are people are seeing CGC versions of number one hitting almost a thousand now. Someone yeah. said, I didn't, I didn't check on those numbers. So I could be just repeating poor information. It but could be what, what they're asking and not what they're yeah. getting. Yeah, because there's been a bunch of weird... Like, that one flew up. Um, I My Batgirl stuff from New 52 flew up. I have a first print and a second print at number one. Those things tripled in price. Why? Because, the you know, Joss Whedon will be doing Batgirl. Why is it... Oh, is it all Batgirl back catalog and not just the New 52? A new fifty two number one is the one that shot up. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. So it must not be based based on the Burnside version. No, it didn't seem to be. Yeah, okay. But yeah, some good stuff in image there. So Reborn a little was a d- little delayed. Uh, still selling thirty thousand copies. Paper Girls, it's twelfth issue, under twelve under thirty thousand. Um, don't think BKV needs the money, but depends on how much Cliff Chang wants to make. So um, uh, they are at the top of all the trade charts. So if they're not making it here, they're getting you there. Hopefully, they're doing okay. Uh, there's that Royal City, twenty five thousand. Killer be killed, twenty three thousand. The new Rat Queens relaunched at twenty two four. Uh, that seems pretty good, right? Heck yeah, I'll take it. Is that better than it? was selling prior volume uh not at the beginning but at the end yes hey tell uh, you'll see my good friends at green valley issue six seven thousand two oh four they lost 17 total readers from five to six <laughs> yeah and those so. 17 people are gonna be sorry <laughs> that was probably just 17 people like you that went down from from three copies to two why would you ever do that? 
and Manifest Destiny right there beside you. 7,000 copies on its 27th issue. And the final nail biter, 6,500 copies sold. I threw an extra one in there, even though they threw an extra dollar on it. Uh, I bought an extra copy just for, just for love. Yeah. I think those, those guys will be at uh, C2E2 again. Hey, I'll take some books. Might be good to take that final issue. I have that entire run. I have every, all of them. Well, don't, don't just do your dupes because you want to sell that run. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I have, uh, like, I was looking at the things that ended. I'm like, oh, cool. I have all the nail biters and I have all the revivals. Yeah. Now what? Well, there's six thousand copies of the X-rated Sex Criminals number seventeen. The Fiona one. <laughs> it was cool. And then uh, thirteen thousand of the regular issue. So it's selling about twenty thousand when you put those two together. Mm-hmm. Marvel also has a nice run of stuff that is, you know, forties. They don't really have many in the fifties. Um, they kind of drop down a little quicker. Uh, but it's all kind of bunched there together in the 30s and the 40s. And there's a lot of titles in there that are um, semi-healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, most of those are, you know, they're in the teens now. Um, they got still got plenty that are in single digits. But they are out of the honeymoon phase. You know, f- issues five and beyond. Uh, so they've got some good stuff that is maintaining its 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 uh, momentum a little bit. Most of it's coming out on time. Did we decide that Patsy Walker Hellcat's dead? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it. I think it was left off the the solicits. Yeah, issue sixteen is it's it's essentially the lowest selling Marvel book at seven thousand two thirty two. And you know we think most, almost all the, are all the X books done and being replaced by this, X Men Blue, X Men Gold stuff. Yeah, I think so. And just fun fact, um, if Patsy Walker Hellcat is gone, the lowest selling Marvel title will currently be Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. How many? Eight thousand two seventy three. Because we're thinking Full Killer and Mosaic are also gone, right? Yeah, well, they weren't on March's list, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's too bad. Because I don't think Great Lake Avengers and Prowler are going to stick around. Mm-hmm. Um, Wasp, I don't think it's the, it's in for the long haul. Spider-Woman, I think, has already been canceled. Yeah, that does not bode well for Moon Girl. She, I think she, you know, she's got a bright future ahead, even if she doesn't have a standalone book. Put her on the champions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. There, there's a bunch of stuff down there too. The, the sub twenties. Um, some things that I'm enjoying too, Bullseye and Hawkeye. Oh, uh, Squirrel Girl. Ms. Marvel. All that's under 20. Mm-hmm. Huh. Eh. Not a ton of neat stuff. I mean, a lot of the same... You could pretty much say the same as this month as you did last month. Aside from the uh, $10 Spider-Man book at the top. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, that won't be around next month. So I'm hoping... Of course, we'll probably have some four and five and six dollar books, though, at this point. Oh, Next, yeah. With the X Men books. So, they'll also be selling well. Doggone it. And our good friends at Cowabunga won't be uh, putting so many into the, the top comic. I think they're responsible for a good percentage of that uh, Amazing Spider Man 25. <laughs> yeah, they helped them out. All right, Drew, anything else from the numbers we can find? No. All right, Drew, let's go to our sneak peek. Let's over to previewsworld.com. Let's click on April 19th, 2017. Let's 
change it to a table view because I can't read the other variety. And let's start, Drew, where we always love to start. Let's start in Dark Horse. Sure, there's a lot of volume in here. Yeah, it's uh, like that. A lot of titles. Uh, of course, I uh, I love the Black Hammer. Number mm-hmm. eight is coming out, and there's even a nice uh, uh, Lemire variant that you can check out if you want. It's pretty. Ooh. It's got a real vintage look to it. I like it a lot. Classic and, Lemire. Um, is it a independently orderable? I don't know. I believe uh, so. Not bad. Go check that out. I stopped reading Department H, but uh, I was kind of shocked when I got my C2E2 badge. It features Department H. Really? Yeah. Very. What a reach that was. <laughs> I thought so too. Um, let's see. Shaolin Cowboy. Who'll stop the ra- Who'll stop the rain? <laughs> yeah, who'll stop the rain? Number one. Um, we determined this is a pre-existing property that's relaunched. I'm guessing. So. Correct. Pass. Anything else in Dark Horse? Not really. All right. Let's head on down to DC Comics. All Star Batman still chugging along at five bucks piece. We've got our standard cover by Jock. We've got our Frank Abelia. Yeah, and a Chris Berman. And our Chris Berman, yeah. Burnham. <laughs> did I say yeah. Chris Berman? I did say Chris ESPN. Berman. <laughs> back, 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 back. <laughs> yeah. Those are all nice. Are those all, Those aren't. none of those are Chase? Those are not. Oh, it's lenticular time, Drew. Batman Lentic- 21. Oh, yeah. Lenticular, the button. the button crossover with our good friends The Flash has begun. I forgot about this. Yeah. I hope you all did forget this. And it's super underordered. Yeah. Because I got a couple coming in. The international versions look really cool, too. Oh, yeah. Very nice. And uh, should be some interesting reveals about what this, the current state of everything. Yeah. Okay. You know? Do you think everybody jumped on the lenticular button and we need to jump out and grab the standard variant or the international or something? Well, those are two ninety nine. Yes. I don't even remember the international being offered. I remember it being offered. We've no, we have not seen the cover until just the other day. I just went lenticular. I did too. No, I didn't. I ordered something else as well, if I remember correctly. But I'm just wondering. Like, I don't think the uh, standard version of the lenticular cover is going to be anything anybody cares about. But I think the international edition may be under ordered, and then the. Batman 21 variant edition by Tim Sale will definitely be under ordered. Nobody but will care you, about that one. But you said that you always go cover A. And I did. I own that. I'm simply talking about... So that's about, the non-lenticular version of the lenticular cover. Correct. I'm simply wondering if so many people have switched over that there's going to be none of these around. Hmm. I'm curious. I'm not saying yes or no. I'm just... That's, that's what my brain flipped to immediately. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. Holy cow, look at that J.G. Jones cover for Batwoman number two variant. Oh, that is nice. Yeah. Who's doing all these? Is it just like different themes? Yep. Is I there like, a theme for these no, variants? No, there's no theme. I like my Shane Davis variant cover. Uh, kind of an homage to the Wolverine cover with a reflection on the claws. It's a reflection on the sword. That's kind of cool. Oh, for Deathstroke 17? Yeah. Very nice. Nice Mike Grell cover. Of course, Mike Grell did the uh, for Green Arrow um, 21 because he yep. did the Longbow Hunters, didn't he? Sure. He brought Green Arrow to. Prominence. 
course, Cho doing a cool little Harley Quinn variant cover. So that's a deadly, is that the number 18 there? Mm-hmm. That is nice. It's my understanding none of these are Chase, right? No, these are independently or orderable. They're not doing Chase variants, so. Mm -mm. I'm interested in this. Uh, I did not read the last Superman. I need to because I'm interested in the Superman Black storyline. The Dustin Nguyen Super Sons is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. it just, I mean, it just looks like Descender. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Lee with another Wild Storm cover. Yeah, all these super books, man, they're all tying together now. So I usually hate that stuff, but when I really like what's going on, I don't mind it. Here's your uh, Sinkovich cover on Trinity B. Who is it? Sinkovich. Oh, nice. He's doing the, the Trinity variant? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. So that'll be hot. His books have been moving like crazy, so... That'll be one to keep an eye on. Of course, he canceled at C2E2, so I won't be getting anything signed by Sinkevich. Bummer. Yeah, so let's see. And this week, I'll be reading... I'm off Fall Star Batman. Uh, I'm back. I'm going to read... I need to catch up on Aquaman. I want to start reading Aquaman again. They bucked me for a little bit. Of course, Batman, the button's a must-read. Um... Reading Nightwing, reading Super Sons, reading Superman. Yeah, that's all I got this week that I'm going to make sure I read. Did you see that McKelvey cover for um, Wildstorm? Yeah. Kind of trippy. Yeah. But that'd be all a right. tough choice between Jim, Jim <laughs> Lee variant and uh, McKelvey variant for that. Yeah, no. <laughs> no kidding. Anything else with DC, sir? No, lots lots of interesting stuff. Yeah, though. big week for them. A lot of stuff coming out. A lot of things I need to be reading. All right, let's head on down to IDW. I'm done. Yep. No mask for me. No cosmic scoundrels for me. No Star Trek for me. All right, let's yeah, see what we got Even the $8 uh, photoshopped uh, f uh, found footage. <laughs> no such oh, man. luck. Eight bucks. Uh, all right, we're down to image where beauty number fourteen. You've been reading beauty and you've been enjoying this second, yes. third, third it's act. Like a, yeah, third arc. Yeah, it's really been good. I don't think cool. I've been picking up these B covers though. Yeah. Oh, we got some April Fools covers with curse words, black science. I hate fairyland. Invincible, plastic. Yeah, some, I just got an email from DCBS. I think they canceled one of them. Might have been East of West. Mm. God Country number one going to a fourth printing. God Country number two going to a third printing. God Country number three going to a second printing. And then God Country number four coming out. So I'll still hot book. Yeah, no doubt. I did watch. I did read the uh, the preview pages in the back of something for Plastic. The first four pages or so of Plastic. It looks really good. Mm -hmm. Redneck looks really good. I like the I'm cover excited. for uh, April Fool's Invincible 135, the Gwyn Invincible. Yeah, that's very cool. Oh, low number 17 is back. Part two, I missed the first one. Dang. I mean, this is, I mean, Royal City number two, we've got a yep. Sex Criminals 18, um, a bunch of number ones, um, 
Yeah, I mean, a lot of old favorites coming back. This is a heck of a week from Image. Yeah. I mean, they're they're pumping it out. Um, the Few, which was really good. I can't believe it's five bucks. Was it always five bucks? Yes, it was. Why am I reading that for five? It's not five bucks good. <laughs> Curse words, are you still reading that? I am. Did you one ever read behind. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're on. You yeah, were on four. I read one and two. I think three. I can't remember. And you liked it? It's not. It's okay. Yeah, okay. So, what do you like better, redneck number one or plastic number one? Oh, mm. ah, uh, Donny Cates, man. Okay, I'm with you. He, he's got the track record, and uh, I mean, vampires are kind of old, but I think plastic will be. I think plastic will be good too. Mm-hmm. Um. But it's got the extra. They got get. It's got the extra cover, so I don't think it's going to be as uh, low of print run. Yeah, with redneck, it's just that one, and that's the one. Grab that one. Yeah. All right, Drew. What do we got for us in Marvel? And lots of good stuff up there. Invincible Iron Man on its sixth issue. Man Thing number one going to a second print. Monsters Unleashed, number one. The first fantastic issue of Marvel's newest heroes. From Colin Bunn. They're still teasing all these answers in Daredevil 19. Oh, for crying out loud. They're still teasing them. Oh, what did Matt do to hide his secret identity? What's wrong with him and Foggy? Uh, Blah, blah, blah. Like We've been... You've been talking about Fool spilling me once, the beans. Shame on me. For ever. Fool me. I don't know. Do we care about Nick Fury number one by James Robinson? Oh, I'll probably check it out. I know I'll check it out, but I don't feel like it's going to be good. I'm more excited about Secret Empire. Hmm. Nick Spencer got to figure this out. Zero. Yeah, I'm interested to see how he this all shakes out. Now, do I have had to read? Uh, yeah, Captain America. Steve Rogers. Eh, probably. You know, I'm sure we'll get a recap. I mean, you got to know the Hydra stuff. Yep. Yeah. Because um, I'm assuming that's going to be the focus of this. You so you got to know what the status quo is and it's not what you would assume it is if you haven't been reading Captain America Steve Rogers but I would imagine they can f- get you up to speed with oh a page of uh, you know recap you're just going to miss out on some of the fun flashback stuff that was that's been really the highlight of that whole series hmm Guardians of the Galaxy Dream On number one. No. 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 I refuse. So it's between Monsters Unleashed number one and Nick Fury number one this week. Well, then (laughs) I guess we'll go with Nick Fury. Unless you want to also throw Secret Empire Zero in there. That was also an option. Yeah, I don't know that it's going to... Be the one to, to want. I don't know. I, I, I mean, that's 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 gonna. If it's yeah, I guess this probably would be a primer for those of you who haven't read that. That's so. What I, yeah, you know, it is a zero issue, so yeah, it might be a primer to kind of tell you everything you need to know. And Marvel's telling us it's important, and we know it's important because they're charging us five dollars for it. That's true. They did. They gave us all the information we needed with the price point. <laughs> all right. Anything else in Marvel? No. Let's head on down down to the back of our book. Our booms, our dynamites, our onis, and all of our other presses. This is. Man, I dropped black. 
Uh, Archie's go reading that. Yep. Anno Dracula. I don't know if you're reading that. It's second issue came out. I am not on that one. Death Be Damned fell off of that. The Deep, number four. I'm enjoying that. It's all AG, though. Mm-hmm. But it is Tom Taylor. Ah. So, Tom Taylor, all AG is pretty good. Failsafe, number one, from Vault Comics by F.J. DeSando and Todd Farmer. Just have that shipped directly to CGC and see what kind yeah, of... Uh, yeah, see if we can see get, if get a 10.0. See if you get a 10 out of it. When he executes the last nanotech-enhanced super soldier, John Ravane... John Ravane? Oh, well. Thought that he was the end of the Haywire Insurgents program. Ten years later, in the wake of social unrest, its true legacy is revealed as sleeper agents scattered throughout the country activate. Ravane must stand between a government he cannot trust and the soldiers he once hunted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, Bill Willingham um, of... Is that the Fables guy? I think so. Uh, he's doing Greatest Adventure over at Dynamite with art by Cesar Rezik and a cover by Kerry Nord. In ancient days, Jason gathered the greatest heroes of his age and set out on the ultimate sea voyage. Now, in Tarzan's era, Jason Gridley does the same. The greatest heroes of the Edgar Rice Burroughs universe come together as the crew of the Good Ship Venture with none other than Tarzan as their captain. It's a race this time against a battleship of dark-hearted villains, and the fate of many worlds hangs in the balance. Um, not a huge fan of Edgar Rice Burroughs, but uh, Fables was good. Yeah. So maybe he can make it interesting. There are four covers, just in case. One of them's blank, though. Doesn't hmm. count. Do we care about the Riverdale Digest, number one? Not from a spec point of view, but um, I am excited for Digest comics at the checkout counter. Uh huh. At grocery stores and uh, big box places and stuff. I, I like the idea of them doing, I guess they're going to do a Marvel version as well. Nice. And uh, so they're going to do a Spider Man. Marvel Spider-Man in digest form. And that's like a, if that's a point of purchase item and the kid's like, gimme, gimme, gimme. And that's a slippery slope to get them to read comics. That's really cool. You know, uh, I think it'd be cool if they did something with Star Wars. No doubt. Um, of course, Batman would be great if DC would get on board and do the same thing. But I like the idea of uh, little digests uh, gateway drugs for comics for <laughs> for younger readers because uh, we ain't gonna be living forever. Featuring stories from our recently relaunched new Riverdale titles, including Archie, Jughead, Betty and Veronica, Josie and the Pussycats, and Reggie and Me. Yeah, so I don't, I'm not interested in myself, but I like the idea and I want it to be very successful. Excellent. Because I won't be able to read a digest. Without my glasses on and maybe a magnifying <laughs> glass. World Reader Number One from Jeff Loveness, uh, Aftershock Comics. <clears throat> we have a new series Meet Sarah, an astronaut traveling from dead planet to dead planet, taking to the ghosts of the dead worlds. Taking, yeah, taking to, I don't get that. As she, f uh, as she fights to discover the secret that's killing the universe, but death doesn't give up its secrets so easily. And as death hunts her from planet to planet, Sarah struggles to maintain the trust of her crew and her own sanity in the endless ocean of lives. Every world has a story, and if she can find the secrets trying them all, tying them all together, she can save Earth from being the next world to die. Yep. Maybe. Uh, I think I pre-ordered one. Yeah, I think I did too. Yeah, it's kind of a th three-horse race, I guess, for me. 
All right, what you got for me, brother? This, of I course, like... is going to be our our lock of the week, Drew's pick of the week. Yeah, I'm going to go with Redneck. I like it. That's, that's going to be mine. Um, but, I mean, I was I was tempted by Failsafe and, of course, Plastic. Yep, I'm going to go with Failsafe um, just because it sounds interesting enough. And the, at, the addition of Vault Comics coming back uh, grading pretty high is uh, an extra little snippet in there. You know, if the odds are better at getting a 9.9 or a 10 with those, uh, toss it out there. Yeah. That's an even bigger upside that you can sometimes get. But, uh, of course, uh, plastic. Plastic. Yeah, yeah. We're, bo- we're both on board for plastic, too. Um, and uh, whatever, um, if there's an Indonesian artist on any Marvel <laughs> title, you might want to take a long look at that. Uh, too soon, Drew. Too soon. Too, too soon. Uh, so, yeah, that's been our sneak peek at next week. That's Thank you for listening to Drew and myself as we took you through all the comics that are coming out. April 19th, 2017. We thank you for all those that uh, sent us messages on social media and through our Gmail account. Uh, Drew's already given you that information at the beginning, and we have gone for an hour and 14 minutes. So we're going to tell you guys thank you so much for tagging along with us. For Drew and for myself, see ya. I, only had a, I have an hour and six minutes. <laughs>